before starting the video, I need to state that Back for Blood's release date is October 12th, 2021. I made this video after playing the open beta that lasted from August 12th to August 16th. But even with the game just being in its beta phase, a lot of my critiques and issues hold true. And most likely will continue to hold true up to the game's release. Somebody shut their butt up. If not, this video is pointless. Hello, I'm Dr. Skipper, your unreliable narrator and silly boy with a big beak. And growing up, I wasn't a PC gamer. I didn't start playing PC games until I was 13 when I learned to crack the admin code on my school laptop, where I played TF2 with all my classmates instead of doing actual schoolwork. Because screw that, I was too busy racking up backstabs as the spy. But I did grow up with an Xbox 360, that magical little beauty. And the most mainstream Valve game on console was Left 4 Dead 2. I'm gonna assume most of you are sweaty little gamers, but for those who aren't, Left 4 Dead 2 is one of the best zombie games ever made. And as a kid, I played it a ton with my family and it blew my stupid little mind. While other kids had parents that only allowed them to play E for everyone games like Sonic or Super Mario, I was bashing in zombie brains while drowning in spitter goo. Nothing's wrong with that, of course. I occasionally play some Mario Kart, but I hate to break it to some of you. Your parents were squares. But being a kid, I was also naive. I had a ton of fun playing the game, but I didn't know why. I just knew that I was having fun, but when I grew older and played it on my crappy little PC rig with my friends, I grew to love it even more. And that was because I realized it wasn't just kid nostalgia, it's a good freaking game. By now, you could tell this video isn't just about Back for Blood, it's also about Left 4 Dead 2, since Back for Blood is attempting to fill in its shoes. And for those out the loop, Back for Blood is a spiritual successor to the Left 4 Dead games made by Valve. Back for Blood is made by Turtle Rock Studios. And that name might sound a bit familiar because the people who founded Turtle Rock Studios worked at Valve and both of the Left 4 Dead games. In 1999, Chris Ashton made a Half-Life mod named Counter-Strike. You might have heard it because it soon became one of the most successful competitive franchises ever. But for the kids whose uh, brains aren't fully there, it's the franchise to the funny surf game. Yeah, that one. But when Valve bought the mod, they offered Ashton a job and he accepted it, joining the Valve family. Later down the line, Ashton and another co-worker named Phil Robb stepped down from the company to co-launch Turtle Rock Studios. Valve asked Turtle Rock to continue their contribution to the development of Counter-Strike and Turtle Rock continued to do so. Eventually, the devs got bored one day and made a mod in Counter-Strike which had the counter-terrorists defend themselves against hordes of enemy terrorists who used only melee weapons, which inspired them to think of the Left 4 Dead concept. Robb and Ashton showed Valve the mod and Valve decided to fund the project and purchase Turtle Rock Studios to help alongside development. However, both companies struggled to work with one another, so in 2010 they split, with Valve maintaining the rights to both Left 4 Dead games, but gave the rights and logos of Turtle Rock Studios back to Ashton and Rob. Gone from Valve and full of optimism with the reputation as the geniuses who made both Left 4 Deads, they began working on their next project, and it was a train wreck. Evolve is no joke. The game is just so much fun. I love it. It's a gorgeous game. I think it's going to do really, really well. I'm all about multiplayer games these days. Best of show, best console game, best online multiplayer, and best action game. Fun as hell. Make you think about and make you remember why you became a gamer. $15 for one, and I repeat, one fucking monster. $130 worth of downloadable content. They were playing it, are no longer playing it, and they moved on to something else. That player base becomes a shell of itself. After four years of development, Evolve released and it was Turtle Rock Studios' solo debut, riding the hype of their past accomplishments, Evolve, from the creators of Left 4 Dead. <laughs> Jeez. Evolve showed a lot of glaring issues with Turtle Rock Studios that might have seemed to fly past people's heads at the time. And those same glaring issues are starting to show again. Evolve's a great concept, I admit it. And when looking at the hype, praise, and marketing, it looked badass. My ass. But when people got to play the game, it was revealed to be tedious, repetitive, and had a serious lack of content. And worst of all, the game was greedy, with an expensive amount of paid DLC and microtransactions. Hey, fellas! Look what I found! Look! Will you cut that shit out? Ah, oh, shit! Which made no sense when you look at Valve's past encounters. Valve had a controversy with Microsoft back in 2009 in regards to paid DLC and Left 4 Dead. At the time, PC players received the Crash Course expansion completely free, where Xbox 360 players had to pay 560 Microsoft points. If you remember Microsoft points, then hello, dinosaur. It's nice to meet you. We've come a long way. Valve didn't want consumers to pay for DLC, but were forced to put it up for purchase because Microsoft called the shots at the time, since they were on top of the console war. They've since been humbled greatly. <coughs> Life or Dead had no microtransactions and no paid DLC on PC, and the DLC would have been free on Xbox if it was their choice. What am I now? Uh, 
stupid. I say this because with the failure of Evolve and the glaring problems of Back for Blood in terms of game design and monetization, I started to question, is Left 4 Dead seen as a classic because of Turtle Rock Studios or Valve Corporation? I, Dr. Skipper, am making this video because I believe that Turtle Rock Studios are amazing at coming up with game concepts and ideas, but are bad at making actual video games. I believe that Left 4 Dead is the game it is today because of Valve and not Turtle Rock Studios, and that Back for Blood is going to crash and burn like Evolve unless they fix the issues that are hurting their game now. And it might already be too late. I fucking left this thing outside because I forgot they was out here. And now this fucking damn turtle water frozen. You see this shit? I hope them niggas still alive, shit. But first I need to go back and explain why Left 4 Dead 2 is an amazing game. And may I dare even say a classic. I, I will. Because, uh, it is. Yeah. Let's go. Zombie games in the mid 2000s were equivalent to today's battle royale, and a lot of games tackled the zombie idea in different ways. Resident Evil 4 was a third person horror game with a beautiful art style that also had great mechanics. Yeah. And Call of Duty World at War had a mode that was a first person wave based survival where the only goal was to see how long you could live for. Two very different games that share the same concept of infected enemies. And since then, you've had a ton more parkour, movement, arena combat, the list just goes on. But what Left 4 Dead did was take the concept of infected enemies and base it around teamwork and cooperation. And after playing Back 4 Blood, I wanted to see how it compared to the Left 4 Dead games, so I decided to get some friends and replay both campaigns to see how it held up 12 years later. And after replaying them, I was shocked and surprised. They sucked. Nah, 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 I'm joking. Left 4 Dead 2 might be one of the greatest co-op games ever made, and is truly a masterpiece. Also from now, I'm gonna merge Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 to not cause any confusion. In most games today, co-op modes aren't centered around cooperation necessarily. Instead of a lot of games are more centered around collaboration toward common interest. You might be playing a battle royale with a group of friends, but at the end of the day, there isn't that much incentive for the team to work as a whole. Kiss my ass! It's four people who are looking out for themselves. And this is because everybody values themselves and their stats more than the overall goal of winning. Nothing below belongs to the team besides the shared victory. It's your kills, your damage, and your loot, surrounded by three others who could help assist those goals. But at the end of the day, if one falls dead, it's not that big of a deal, and doesn't really change the outcome. This isn't just exclusive to Battle Royales, of course. A lot of games today are competitive encouraging you to be independent and not solely rely on one another. While you all might be pushing toward that common goal, there's still a leaderboard encouraging you to be competitive with your own teammates to see who's the best. Now you're not just fighting for the common goal of victory, you're instead fighting each other for gold limbs, most kills, top frag positions, or any other leaderboard stats that could also cause division. Even looter shooters don't care about cooperation. A destiny raid is just everybody running around looking out for themselves searching for their own loot. Fighting a Borderlands boss is just four people shooting a hitbox for the enemy to die faster, so the real fight can begin, and that's to see who gets the gold weapon. Cooperation isn't required and the job can be done solo. It would just be a bit harder, but nonetheless, it could be done. This isn't full loaded criticism to shit on selfish game design, it's just stating the truth. Valorant, Overwatch, Counter Strike, and any other competitive shooter don't solely focus on cooperation. I'm a very egotistical player who strives to be MVP if I can. If a player is putting me in jeopardy, I'd rather them just die so I could carry the extra weight. This leads to fun game situations like clutches and 1v3s, but to say it's engraved cooperation, it's just not true. Left 4 Dead 2 is solely focused around cooperation because of how the game is designed and because players have nothing to gain. The game gives you stats in the safe house, but it doesn't matter. There's no XP for your levels or stars for your battle pass. It's just fun bragging rights, and even those don't matter if nobody gets to the safe house. Don't even think about it. Look, I'm, I'm still- Oh my god! Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> In Left 4 Dead, you don't have a rank, you don't have progression, and you don't have a battle pass. You don't even have a level. You have nothing. Kids are gonna mess up my fucking tomato! The main goal is just to beat the campaign and have fun. Just gonna stand there and watch me burn. Shut up, bitch! And like I was saying earlier, Left 4 Dead's game design is not meant to be played solo. Of course you have the sweaty people who do speed runs beating the game solo, but it's not how you're objectively supposed to play the game. In Left 4 Dead, you have to play as a team with full cooperation. There's no debate on playstyle or preference, that's literally how the game is designed. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Um, reloading being peace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you idiot. You could be a selfish gun blazing Rambo pushing ahead everybody else only wanting kills. Or you could be the limp runt falling behind by not sticking with the team to then be pinned by a special infected, making you incapacitated. And the only way to be saved is by your teammates, making you completely dependent on one another. There's no MVP or star player. Everyone is equal and just as vulnerable as each other. The special infected and game director make sure of this. Sticking together is vital to assist your teammates from jockeys, hunters, and smokers but being clumped together also makes you vulnerable to certain infected like the Charger, Spitter, and Boomer. Oh! <laughs> Where? What was I fucking hit you, Adam. Wait, how did you guys die? Charger, Charger fucking knocked him off. Splitting up makes you vulnerable and sticking together makes you just as vulnerable, adding variety and unpredictability, keeping you on your toes. It also have you sharp between the ears. Back for Blood is mostly on par with Left 4 Dead in terms of co-op, but has some glaring issues. Back for Blood has a currency system for the shops called Copper, and that can be spent in each safe house with team upgrades being optional. You could buy ammo for yourself, health for yourself, and equipment for that little special pumpkin that is yourself. Also, you could buy high tier guns and attachments. Ugh. I am not a fan of this. Players are selfish when they have the choice to be, and will buy items that fit them and their needs only, and rarely, almost never, the team due to upgrades being so expensive. You see, you could buy meds, tools, or upgrades that support the team, or you could buy a cool purple shotgun, a scope, and extra ammo for moi. In some situations, you could compromise with other players and all buy a pipe bomb to get past something, but most of the time you're going to be buying for yourself only. Let's be honest, the shop is obnoxious. Items and weapons in Left 4 Dead were always free and disposable so no one would become attached to them. They were also never ranked because if they were, people would choose one gun over another for objective value over subjective enjoyment. Now you have items that carry sentiment because they either cost money or have attachments that cost money or have high stats. If you hate a certain gun, you now feel forced to use it because it has higher stats than other weapons that might suit your playstyle. This is the same shit looter shooters do and I can't stand it. The shop causes division and makes players think more about money than survival or finishing the mission. If someone on the team dies, that's just one less hand to steal loot and guns. And if you have money and see items that are best fit for you, you're gonna buy them. Money. The currency you find is also not shared with your teammates. So in some matches, you're going to have the penny-pinching, selfish assholes who now have the objective to loot and stray from everybody else, so they could splurge in the next safe zone. This behavior also translates to random crates scattered around the map with guns and attachments that can only be taken by one player, causing more selfish behavior. And they're rarely punished for it due to the special infected being an absolute joke. You pull that selfish shit in Left 4 Dead, the game director will place a hunter or jockey to punish you. But in Back 4 Blood, it's damn near encouraged. In Left 4 Dead, the game director was fair and challenging when necessary, and this caused a lot of focus, fun, and exhilaration when I was playing with my friends. When someone was pinned by a jockey, the first reaction wasn't to get mad about the health bar declining, but instead to be shocked and act urgently. Because the game's fun, you should be having fun, it's a video game. The common infected are also dangerous and can overwhelm you, but if you have basic communication and common sense, it doesn't become that aggravating and still remains an enjoyable experience. And the same applies to the special infected. I hate game designers whose solution to strengthen enemies is just to increase their HP. That is lazy and uninspired. The hunter is easy to kill, but his strength is that he pounces and pins you down. And if you don't attempt him quickly, he's extremely dangerous, and this applies to every special infected besides the tank. Oh my god! But that's the tank's intentional design. He's just a huge bullet sponge, but it's an event to fight him. Tank, Where's the tank? Oh, he's he's coming. Coming. Help! There's another tank! But the zombies. On normal difficulty and back for blood, the ridden are not threatening and are extremely easy to maneuver. The mobility options are partially at fault for this since it's easy to increase the distance by simply running away due to the game having a sprint mechanic. Also since it's easy to evade the ridden, melee weapons suck complete ass. You can make builds that make melee viable, but the cost of having melee being your only strong suit because of the card system. But overall, melee is impractical and unnecessary due to how powerful the firearms are and how gracious ammo is, which is disappointing in comparison to Left 4 Dead where melee was practical and fun. A lot of the time I was running and gunning with no urgency. The guns are extremely powerful, and I'll admit they're fun to shoot, but I never had to really worry. And the moments that required more of my effort and attention were more annoying instead of being thrilling and action oriented. And the special infected and pack for blood sucking complete ass doesn't help this either. Ugh, the ogre is a laughing stock when it comes to filling in the shoes of the tank. And that's because he isn't fun to combat at all. Every time I encountered him, I just ran past him so I didn't have to deal with his bullshit health bar. 
I don't know if the ogre is going to be a common special infected or if he was just only used for that campaign mission, but I just hope to never see him again. What a joke. The snitch is annoying and poorly designed. Embarrassing actually, especially when compared to their inspiration. The charm of the boomer was that if he gets too close, he throws up on you, alerting the horde, which also impairs your vision. But if you catch him far away, he's one shot, one kill, which prevents him from throwing up on you. It's fair and balanced. It also punishes the player if they aren't vigilant. But if you're paying attention to your surroundings, you could catch the special infected off guard and they will do the same to you vice versa. Oh! <laughs> 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 but the snitch isn't just annoying and uninspired, it's poor game design. No matter what, you have to alert the snitch, so there's no charm or fairness. You can't prevent it or outsmart it so it comes off as an annoying obstacle instead of a dynamic fair foe. Even though the witch was strong as hell and would knock you in one hit, you had ways to outsmart or prevent her. Giving options to the player without screwing them over is good game design. The snitch sucks. What a joke. The Blood Bruiser is arguably the worst out of all the special infected. He's a tall bullet sponge that spawns in a shit ton, and that's because the game director is terrible. The game director is so poor that you might even have to deal with two of these goddamn headaches at once. So I just had to re-record this real quick. You can hear the fan, you know, but yeah. But there's, there's not two, there's three of them. Three, three in the same place, three. <laughs> they really are the worst to deal with. They're boring, tedious, and unfair. I don't feel thrilled and rushed to combat them like I do with a tank. I just roll my eyes and load four clips into it. Also, that hit point is so hidden that they might as well just remove it. I really can't stand this guy. What a joke. The wretch sucks as well. It's attempting to be a spitter by spewing goo, but it's just unpredictable due to its suicide charging. The reaction time is too high and the bland audio design gives you no way to predict them. The charger also had a short reaction time, but it was easy to detect and hear them when they were charging. In worst case scenario, he pins you down. Your team could just give assistance and deal with him quickly. The hawkers are okay, actually. They shoot a goo that makes the player stuck in place and the only way to get out is by having people untangle you. Unless you have a card that allows you to do it yourself. I hate these fucking cards. Overall, these special infected are a joke when compared to the fantastic roster of Left 4 Dead. And it makes no sense how the creators are so tone deaf if they were the sole heads behind these games. It feels so good as comes. Ah, so now we have to talk about game design. The reason Left 4 Dead is so cherished is because it's simple. Simplicity and complexity is Valve's strong suit. The game is easy to pick up and understand. You have a primary, a secondary, health, and utility. And all you have to do is follow the objectives to get to each safe house without dying. This creates a fun game loop out of simple foundations. Back for Blood also has the same objective based design, but not the simplicity. I like innovation in gaming. Running, stamina, and ADS are additions that are necessary for the modern audience, and they fit well in Back for Blood. Some of you Halo fans might be shocked by the idea of praising innovation due to how that community bitches about sprinting and ADS. But in modern gaming, there's some stuff that you might call innovation that I call unnecessary. And that's the card system. The corruption cards are annoying. It's a cool gimmick, but should be optional or tied to specific game mode. Having it in the base game ruins simplicity, adds confusion, and taints some of the art style. Trust me, we'll, we'll be talking about that art style in a bit. But when it comes to player cards, you should 100% assume bad faith. Like I said, this isn't a Valve game, and I can smell microtransactions from a mile away. The cards offer buffs and bonuses to the player while also having some restrictions. And where some might call it customization, I call it a headache. I don't give a fuck about pre-made loadouts, assorting my inventory, or grinding for more cards. I like it simple, kill zombies and have fun. And when you introduce cards, you introduce metas and overpower builds that abolish the game. Battlefront 2 is an example of a poorly designed card system. It's a fun game, but you pretty much have no options because of how strong certain cards are, while others aren't, making them not viable at all. Also, I'm not sure if the cards in Back for Blood are going to be for purchase, but if they are, we're going to have a pay to win situation on our hands. And speaking of paying, I hate weapon skins. Turtle Rock has a reputation of selling shit skins, like guns that are literally blue, and I see this happening in this game as well. I think cosmetic customization is a good innovation, but also adds problems with developers not understanding player worth and getting overly greedy. We'll just have to see how it goes at launch, I guess, but the odds are definitely not in their favor. Feels good to get this shit out the mud, nigga. The game director and AI are horrible. You have got to be fucking joking. I stated this earlier, but I'm going to elaborate. Anything above normal difficulty is unplayable unless you have a team stack. This is because of the brain dead AI and the brain dead game director.
Left 4 Dead's game director is amazing, adding fun, fast-paced game situations like random but fair hordes, weapon and health spawns, and game variety with the special infected. And this is because Valve worked on it. In Back 4 Blood, I had trouble playing with a friend when we didn't have a four-stack team due to how poor the friendly AI was. Written AI is also bad, being overly stupid, and the game director's solution to this is just to spawn four times the amount on higher difficulties while giving you trauma with no trauma stations or meds. Quick note on that, the trauma and three strike system are the worst part of this game. The game punishes you when you take damage by giving your player trauma, which adds this annoying red bar at the end of your base health bar which prevents you from healing that area. And if by the grace of god you find a trauma station, you have to pay the same currency you use in the shops to decrease that trauma. I lost a survivor run because the game director didn't give my team a trauma station after we got to a safe house. The trauma station is stupid and unnecessary, but at least put them in the fucking safe room instead of just scattering them randomly. Even if they weren't scattered just put them in the safe room. Let the player actually have fun. This should be a corruption card at worst. Why is it a game mechanic? It doesn't add tension. It just pisses the player off. Also, the three strike system is stupid, unnecessary, and alienating. Fuck! You have three attempts to finish a campaign. If you die three times, fuck you. You aren't going to the last safe house. You just lose the game. And since the game AI and the game director are bullshit, the pressure of three attempts doesn't make the game fun and makes it dreadful. Look, I'm a gamer. I like to goof around with friends, and this three strike system just adds unnecessary pressure and limitations and doesn't let me express and goof off. You're a fucking zombie game. Stop taking yourself so goddamn seriously and let the players have fun. Like the cards, this should be optional or a gimmick mode. Take it out of the base game. Get it out of there. A game's identity determines its legacy in the future. Hey look, another Assassin's Creed. Oh, a Far Cry? Oh my god, a Call of Duty. All games that are fun when playing in the moment, but will be forgotten with time, leaving no legacy to be cherished. But it's been 12 years since Left 4 Dead 2 launched, and we're still talking about it. And that's because the game nails its identity. The game has aged greatly for how long it's been released, and I'm surprised it isn't even at all gross to look at. And that's because the amazing simplistic art style. But let's not jump the gun, all right? I have to talk about the game's marketing before I dive into the art style, because the trailers ooze with personality personality and pitch the game so well. The first Left 4 Dead trailer is fantastic, might I say even revolutionary. It does everything that establishes the game's identity in just 4 minutes and 24 seconds. It sells the tone while showing you the game's mechanics and zombies. Everything that happens in the trailer can happen in game. It also displays other iconic additions like the amazing sound effects, character callouts, special infected, and diverse cast and voice acting. You have these interesting characters being displayed for people to remember. People love to attach voices to people, like me with this stupid fucking bird you guys love so much. World at War failed with this, adding generic soldiers that nobody gave a shit about so they spiced it up. They added polar opposite personalities who are now adored today. Takeo, Nikolai, Dempsey, Richtofen. You know these people. They're iconic. And Left 4 Dead has that as well. It has the same exact thing. Bill's this grizzled Vietnam vet and is also the team leader. Francis is a sarcastic but cool biker guy rocking sick ass tattoos and a pump shotgun. Lewis is a naive but optimistic sales worker with no combat experience at all. And Zoe who is a college student for films living her fantasy of a cool zombie movie and holds down her own. All different people unite under shitty circumstances and they nail the chemistry between everyone. The dialogue, campaign events, and character development has made this group iconic and memorable. Then there's Left 4 Dead 2's trailer. In the modern age of gaming, sequels are usually worse than uninspired, attempting to ride the coattail of the original. This is not the case of the game or the trailer. Left 4 Dead 2 has a great trailer, and it might be one of the best pieces of video game marketing of all time. Where Left 4 Dead 1 had scary vibes the horror-like atmosphere, Left 4 Dead 2 does the complete opposite. You see a crew with nothing in common take the offensive, showing off everyone's personality while once again showing off the game mechanics, mission locations, weapons, infected, and everything that makes this game so fucking amazing while also making it look like a fun zombie movie. It also has an amazing soundtrack in the background, and I'll talk about that in a second. Ellis is this gun-crazy southerner, but is also a clumsy young kid. Nick, the mobster, the cheapskate, has come way too far to die now. Coach, who is Rick Ross if you never took on rapping. And Rochelle, who's a reporter but also supports her team being the most positive person. And is the least enjoyed by the fandom. Both trailers are amazing and show the fear, fun, action, and thrill of both games in a single trailer for each game. A single trailer each. That's, cr that's insane. Then you have Back for Blood. The reason the Left 4 Dead trailers work so well is because I was trying to pitch the game as a zombie movie. Every mission has a kick-ass poster, the ending of the missions have credits, and the trailers were cinematic. Simplicity and complexity. Something Valve nails. Turtle Rock's trailer is typical, boring, and disappointing, making it look like any other shit generic zombie game that's came out in the last five years. 
Looking at you, State of Decay 2. Which makes no sense. This is the same dev team that made both of these old trailers. How do you fuck up this bad, adding no soul or heart? No one from the main squad even stands out. LeBron James. How do these people even relate to each other? Are they held by circumstance? Why are they fighting? What's the dynamic between the characters? Also, don't give me that bullshit that it's just a trailer you'll find out in the main game. Left 4 Dead's trailers did that. The helicopter made of chocolate is a great moment. Ellis and Rochelle's elevator scene. Lewis asking Bill to run or shoot. Bill and Francis. Bill and Zoe. And these are just from each his own trailer. One trailer per game. There is no excuse. The dev team is literally riding the hype that they made both previous games. So why is it so poor? You literally made them. You have no excuse. It's linear and boring, and that's because the cast sucks. None of them have the charm of each Left 4 Dead cast members and are overly complicated. Caught, we said no more paddling up Shit Creek. Well, at least we still got a paddle. We do have the paddle, right? This place feels like pineapple on pizza. Just what did she off. say? Oh my God! There'd be a thing is too much attention. Oh, shut up, man. Shut up, Lane. I don't respect you. Dumping boring expedition wanting you to care while having no dynamic with each other. You all right there, hon? I need to tell you, I need to hear myself say it. When the collapse came, I saw it happen, and I did nothing. I was scared. No, you don't understand. It was my family. My parents. I watched them die and did nothing. Shut the fuck up. Simplicity, Turtle Rock. We should have four, four people to get attached to. When you give us too many options, it creates too much complexity and doesn't work. While Payday 2 is a great game, the only way to get attached to those characters is by researching them on your own, not in game. And people don't want to do homework on shit that's uninteresting on first impression. You have a roster of people that come off obnoxious and forgettable because the dialogue is annoying and generic. And the subpar voice acting doesn't help this either. Except for this guy. <laughs> He's voiced by Rigby. When Ellis was pinned, I knew that shit. The actor put their all in those screams and stood out from the rest of the crew. Ah! Oh! Ah! When Francis is low on ammo, I knew that shit. Coach, you Rick Ross, God, I hear you from a mile away, you beautiful hunk of a man. But in Back for Blood, I get annoying Deadpool-esque deliveries over a ham radio to robots. What have we here? Look, I feel that and it don't feel good. The cast isn't likable and it's gonna taint the game's legacy. But now the art style. The Ridden might be the most ugliest infected I've ever played against. They are on par with Sunset Overdrive's infected and Fortnite Save the World. When playing Left 4 Dead, the thing I loved most was how fun it was to see and kill all the zombies. They all had unique clothing depending on the settings of the map and they had personality. You guys remember those cool ass clowns in Dark Carnival? Are the hazmat zombies? Or the mud crawlers? That shit is awesome. <laughs> Dude, these little mud crawler things. Holy shit, that guy's whole spine is showing. And the regular common infected told a story. They looked like normal people in an infested world. Not these biohazard knockoffs. The Ridden are cheap and generic. And while we're at it, the Ridden is a stupid ass name. Also, something else that made the Left 4 Dead zombies memorable was the dismemberment. Because it was so detailed and awesome. Limbs blown off with shotgun shots, shooting out blood, squirting out blood. Intestines falling out depending on the caliber of the weapon. Spines showing with people's backs blown out, blood splattering. That's cool. That is fun. Instead of this shiny jelly shit. There was effort put into the gore. Back for Blood doesn't have this. Like I said, the blood looks like jelly. When I have a chainsaw in Left 4 Dead, it's a fucking meat locker. I want that. If zombies were equivalent to food, this is a dried out steak. Look at the comparison of gameplay. In Left 4 Dead, it feels like every shot has an impact. The animation and design of the infected come off as not just copy paste. It is copy paste, but it doesn't feel like it. In the moment, it feels real, giving you immersion. The game has a fucking soul. These aren't lazy programmed AI monsters that got shit out by a dying game director. These are zombies that want to kill you and need to die. Having the appearance of real people who were once not infected and they stand out from the crowd. Look at this guy. Looks like it could be in Prototype 2. Or that shit biohazard mode in Siege. It's ugly, bland, and uninteresting. None of the special infected match the world setting. They just look like alien abominations that would be in some Resident Evil game. The hunter's jogging gear, the jockey's weird body, the boomer's fat appearance, charger's overall, smoker's tongue, and the tank's muscled nature. And all the other characteristics of some of the other special infected make them stand out. Look at the trailer. This is the spitter equivalent? What the fuck is this? Art style is important because you have shit that ages greatly like Left 4 Dead. Playing this today is awesome. It still looks awesome. And I don't get that from Back 4 Blood. When it's 2021 and your special infected look like Fortnite Save the World's infected and you're trying to fill the shoes of what was once your peak, you failed. 
It's embarrassing. What's the tone of the game? It's so bipolar. Do you want tension and realistic themes or do you want a wacky unrealistic game like Sunset Overdrive? Left 4 Dead was wacky but still grounded. So disappointing. But now we have to talk about the thing that is most important to why Back 4 Blood doesn't live up to Left 4 Dead. And that's the sound design and the soundtrack. Left 4 Dead's gunshots, medicine noises, character dialogue, zombie sound effects, and zombie cues are magnificent. The infected are oozing with personality, making unpredictable noises that still ring in my head 12 years later. Nick's shrieks give me nostalgia, Ellis telling me they're spitter goo, that jockey on me. All this has given me nostalgia. The crisp reload animations and the melee noises. Oh, I love those melee noises. And the special infected cues is what makes them stand out. The hunter screamed. Jockey's laugh, boomer groan, and the yelling of the tank. It adds personality. Back for Blood doesn't have this. The most personality the game had is when a zombie would scream the fucking n-word. What did you call me? What did that zombie say? And that got removed quickly. Back for Blood's audio design is generic and subpar. How do you fuck up this bad if you made the old games? Like listen to the shotgun, it sounds like a pistol. But now to the soundtrack. I don't know how Left 4 Dead did it, but when I hear a car alarm go off to then hear that shriek with a text that says you alerted the horde, I feel panic and excitement at the same time. The music when a horde is about to come is some of the most thrilling sounds and music combinations that you will ever hear in a video game. Left 4 Dead's a fucking movie, and a good movie always has a fire ass soundtrack. When I turn the corner and hear that tank music, I clench my ass cheeks, look for cover, and hold down that goddamn mouse button like my life depends on it. Oh, 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 <laughs> you fucking idiot! When the evac is here and I'm the last man standing, I feel like the protagonist and it's my movie. It's fun, man. It's so much fun. And Valve knew this. They knew that the music would bring the highs and the lows of the game plot out, giving a roller coaster of emotions, which gives you these champion moments that feel victorious. And when those credits roll, oh, I still get chills. Even when you die, that somber music that kicks in and everything muffles around you is so impactful. These little details start to add up. This is your movie, and you could be the main character, the side character, you could be who you want, you could be the sacrifice, you could do anything. I never felt this when playing Back for Blood. Killing zombies is fun, but it felt like a video game 9 to 5. There's never those movie moments where the drums roll and you have to haul ass while trumpets are blasting in your ears. There could have been, because there's some fun moments in Back for Blood, but a piece always felt missing. When someone dies, there's no sad music with an X mark splattered with blood. There wasn't that tank music or the charger screams or the witch music. It felt incomplete. That's my biggest issue with Back for Blood. I get the concept. It's a fun concept, but it feels like a zombie. Like it grabbed the face of Left 4 Dead and skinned it off, now trying to wear and pass off as it. There's so much potential. I want a cool Left 4 Dead zombie game, because awesome, getting the boys together and sitting time. down and playing that game reminded me how much I love Valve games. It made me feel like a kid again. <laughs> okay, fuck you. Shit, 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 shit. Oh my god! Why'd you shoot at him? That's what you get. Why'd you- levitating. He's down here, cuz on me. on me. And with everyone growing up and sweating their asses off in battle royales, you rarely get that anymore. I got to have fun with friends and live in a movie. I want Back for Blood to be that. I want to have those screaming moments of highs and lows. I, I want them to have that comeback where they prove that they were the minds behind Left 4 Dead and that Evolve was a mistake and will never happen again. But that isn't gonna happen. This game will probably be another Evolve. It's gonna have microtransactions, sell bad skins, and I've come to the realization that they didn't make Left 4 Dead the game that it is today. That was Valve. Like I said, Turtle Rock are good at coming up with ideas, but this game has proven that they can't execute it properly. And to be honest with you, I'm tired of a comeback story. It's getting old. I want a game that is great and full of heart on arrival. It's cool that Battlefront did it and other people did it, but let's not have this be a standard. The comeback shouldn't be a standard. Games should be what they are day one. Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 were a year apart from each other, and they knocked out the fucking park. Those games are amazing, and they remind me today why I love gaming. And Back for Blood did not fill in those shoes. Nonetheless, I'm happy I made this video. Playing Left 4 Dead again was a blast from the past. Games need to be fun like this again. And I'm happy you made it this far to the video. You might be getting a bit scared. Oh no, he's gonna beg me to subscribe over and over. Nah, it's it's your choice. I had a lot of fun making this video. I had fun coming up with the concept and getting the band back together to play these games for this video. And if you appreciate it, it's your choice to tag along for future projects I do. This isn't a one-off thing. November is gonna be packed with a shit ton of games and I'm an opinionated narcissist. So if you wanna click that little red button and stick for the journey, you won't regret it. Or, uh, you might.
who knows? If you have any opinions or have anything to say about this video, talk about your memories, let me know in the comments down below so I'm not talking to a brick wall. Thank you to the channel members. You guys are the real winners and allow me to do stuff like this. I really, really appreciate you sticking with me. Thank you. Also, thanks for 55K. With that, I'm Dr. Skipper, and I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye. I chain smoke till I choke. Have a good heart, but bad health. You would never know. Where can you turn at the end?